Hi, this is Damian at ProvenWorks, and I'm going to show you some of the functionality of address tools for Salesforce today. I'm going to create a new lead here. Our functionality operates on standard Salesforce objects out of the box, but we also support custom objects and custom fields. So that means leads, accounts, contacts, and contracts will be pre-configured, but you can also configure the functionality on a custom address block on Opportunity, for example, or on your own custom object, whatever that might be. In this case, I'm going to use our Power Search functionality to search for an address. So I'm going to start typing our address. Type in more and narrows down to one exact address, which then populates throughout the fields. Now, this is a U.S. Postal Service value, and our data is based on global postal authority data in the U.S., obviously, U.S. Postal Service. So if I were to put in an address that's out of range, for example, uh, we're not going to find it, but we're going to be presented with options of addresses that do exist close to that range. I'm going to go ahead and save this record. You'll see that we've converted some values here. So NY is uh, the stored value for New York in this case, and US has been converted to United States. You have the choice of how you want to store the region values, either the full name or the codes, and you can also store alternate values side by side. We've also populated some other pieces of information here. First off, and maybe most importantly, the address status, which indicates that this address is a good US Postal Service address. It's been verified in this case. We've also populated county two different ways. In this case, it's the same value. We've populated county from the premise, so that means the entire postal address, and also a fuzzy match based on the zip code. We've also populated those alternate values of New York and USA in case you had another integration that wants the full value or wants the ISO code respectively. We've also populated a value here, Bob Smith, and that's an example of a custom value that you can populate via our lookup relationship field uh, that's populated by our trigger. So that means any of your custom region data can be automatically populated on the record based on the values in the address. In this case, this is being pulled in via the state field, or the state value rather, New York. So if we go to our New York record, we can see that that's where that value lives. So you can add your own fields to this object, so you could populate your own territories, be they continent values, subregions, any region on either our country, state, or zip code, or county object can be populated with your own custom data and then automatically inserted in the record for your territory management, for your flows, um, any sort of territory function that you require also populated a geolocation point and also the current time. Next, we're going to take a look at our customizable validation rules. So I'm going to create another new lead here. And in this case, I'm going to save it without anything in the address blog. And I've been prevented from saving because country must contain a value. So individual fields in the address block can be made mandatory. And they can also be made mandatory on a per country basis. So if I put in United States, for example, and try and save, I'm still prevented from saving because state province is mandatory for this country. These validation rules can be turned on or off on each field, on each record type, on each object, and also on a per user or per profile basis. So commonly our users might turn them off for an integration that's pushing a lot of data into Salesforce, but leave them enabled for their users who can see those error messages and act upon them. We have data for countries, for states, and in the US uh, down to the zip and state level. So if I put in valid US zip code here, uh, automatically we can populate values. But if I put in something else in the city field, for example, or even a valid um, city name that's not correct, we'll be first notified that it's incorrect. And if we try and save, we're still going to hit that validation rule. So again, these are optional. You can turn them on or off for your users and likely turn them off for your integrations. But you can leave our standardization rules in place either way so that all the United States will get converted to USA or US or vice versa, depending on your preference. We're going to take a look at how we can automate our postal address verification. So I'm going to hop over to accounts. Now on accounts, I've got a very simple process configured that will automatically verify any address that has a status of not checked. So I'm going to put in a um, partial address here. So we'll, have, we'll go back to 14 Meyer Avenue again. Uh, we're going to take out the city and we're going to take out the state as well to give it a bit of a challenge and go ahead and save just with this partial data. So this is going to call this process. Uh, it's going to execute a future method, which is going to call our premise level address verification. So it takes a second. In this case, it's uh, verified uh, before the page had a chance to even load. So we've populated the AV and the Meyer AV. We've populated Poughkeepsie, New York, and also the 5 plus 4 zip. And we've also got our address status verified, which indicates that this is a good US Postal Service address. And you've probably already noticed our Lightning component here. This is available anywhere in Salesforce. You can apply to any object, just like our override page. And you can have multiple of these components if you have multiple address blocks on the page. And they allow your users to either verify or edit the address on the fly uh, on the detail page uh, with the same interactive functionality you've seen previously. 
So hopefully this was informative. If you do have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we offer demos of the solution. We're happy to give a free trial if you'd like to take it for a spin. Um, and hopefully if you do reach out to us, you'll find us to be a friendly and informed bunch. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Bye.